so I will read my last poem. Its name is uh, I Belong to You, which I didn't read still uh, in the front of you. So my suggestion is also, if you have time, of course, to read the second one, which Gurudev didn't read, because uh, when I read it last time, uh, he was in the hospital. So if it's possible, if he has enough time, I can read after this, just for him, this second one, how you decide. Definitely, Prabhu, please. We, we really want to, as much as you would like to give us, we are ready to receive. Okay. From you. Uh, just to open it and I will start. Si. Ok. Nice. So I, as I said, this uh, uh, the name of the song is "I Belong Only to You." It's uh, dedicated uh, for our Radhika, of course. <laughs> you can hear me properly, yes. Yes, very good. Okay, starting now. Orade, while you sleep, a whisper from your lips writes words on your amber pillow. Mohan, Mohan, with golden embroidery, is gently impressed. These are not words. Those are the kisses you left on his cloud-colored face while you brought the red sun to his skin with your palms. While you sleep, your hair is scattered. In it are the shadows of the trees from the grooves of Raj. In it are the touch of the fingers of the one who called you to them with a flute. With skilled fingers, he entwined your strands while you decorated the Yamuna with the reflection of your face. O Radhe, while you sleep, the kinkaris are awake. They are waiting for the colors of the morning to fall on your bed and the scent of pollen to enter the room. And when the blue parrots from your eyes rush through the window, Vrindavan also wakes up. Oh, our dear, while you dream, yellow butterflies drink nectar from your feet. And then over there, where Govinda sleeps, they put it gently on his lips. Oh, my Swamini, I belong only to you. My heart beats only with your name. And if I'm dreaming now, I don't want to wake up. And if I'm awake, don't leave me. Let me be a clot of your feet with which the kinker is in the morning, make the water clear. Oh, Kishori, while you are sleeping, there is a piece of heaven on your face and on your lips is the sickle of the moon. With your smile, the universe shines. While we look at it, we bat your name written on our lips with tears. O oh, Devi, is there anyone more beautiful than you? Does Mohan have a favorite gopi? Did the dewy grass caress softer feet? and greater love expanded our hearts. Did the eyes cry more tears while they looked at your face in ecstasy? 
Are there sweeter words that touch lips when we say, Radi, Radi, our dearest? Oh, the brilliance of thousands of moons. How can I guilt the words of you? How can the traveling of the heart speak in verse? What kind of song to paint your face? How to sing you on the canvas with colors? Oshya Meshwari, the cup of sweet juice of your name is never empty. And the more I drink it, the sweeter it gets. And the thirst does not stop. Oh, Daddy, I belong only to you. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting for her, your faithful servant, which will speak your name with a new voice. Then, when my body turns into flames, and the river carried the ashes to the banks where oblivion rests, your new maid will then approach you, and I will be covered by the shadow of your feet. I will open my palms and give you my heart, as I'm doing now. Oh, Radhe, I belong only to you. So thank you for your attention. So second one, I read it just for the Guru Dev, for his pleasure. I will read it again because I didn't read it. Just a second, please, just to fix it. So the name of this song is uh, Palms of Love. Orade, on your outstretched palms, love is condensed. It flows. It is a sweet river that pours over the, over the burning worlds and brittle empires. And whoever bats in it, his gaze no longer lowers to the ground. He spreads the clouds with his hands, looking for your feet to pour his heart on them. Whoever reaches its drops does not taste the water from the source of this world anymore. You just have to want them strongly enough, open your heart wide enough. O pilgrim seeker of hasty step who visits many temples, if your eyes are dry and your heart is thirsty, don't worry. In this water, Radha's lovely feature flickers. Approach this river of love and you will water your heart. And when that love swells, it buds the eyes. And then you see clearly. You see that everything is in her and she in everything. And with her is her beloved who drinks the moon's glow from her face. O traveler of fiery step, on her outstretched palms are the sweetness of grapes, drops of a dew and the sounds of conch shells from the altar. On them are the keys of the gates of all captive hearts. A new life is offered, offered to them, one that has no end. O oh, virtuous seeker, the shadow of many lives that you drag with you, that slow down your gate. You have read all kinds of books, Many experts were your teachers. You wore all kinds of robes. And in fear, you bowed many times as well. 
you knocked timidly on many doors. But at the door of your heart, did you knock loud enough? Look at those hands of unrepeatable brilliance which offer the keys of to love. Accept them and let the glow from your heart rush towards hers too. Let that bird of joy that you clutch in your folded hands fly towards her. Just open them, just as she does. Orade, on your outstretched palms in the dust of Rindavan, from it spreads the scent of Govinda's feet, which intoxicates the winds, and then they blow it to every corner where your names are sung, to everyone who calls you in a silent prayer. Go, our Swamini, from your sweetness, Govinda becomes even sweeter, and you are the one who shares the nectar, and whoever tastes it becomes a drunk. O traveler who has reached the goal, taste that nectar from the palms of her whose nails are lotus petals, and don't be afraid of the greed and drunkenness that will overtake you. They are of eternal life, where there is no more wandering. So Rade, on your palms is the bluish reflection of Govinda's feet, which hides the traces of his lips that you are pressing on your face. On your palms, there are unspoken words on them, because apart from your name, is there anything more beautiful to describe love. So that's it. Thank you very much. Very nice. Very beautiful. Shiva Prada Das Kijai. So beautiful. Yeah. So touching. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you for your attention. This is just your mercy, all of you. Let you touch my hearts and give me some feelings to can offer to Radhika's feet. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's only your mercy that you make us to touch and feel it. Thank you, my dear. Hey, no. Thank you, Sri Yorparada, and thank you also for stepping forward and being very bold and brave. And please always come back to read your poems to us. We are really impressed and touched. Thank you, Suniti Didi. Well, that's your mercy. Jai Shri Radhe. So we will continue to read the Saints of Braj. Today we are reading for the also the book I want to follow, page number 145 is the chapter number 16. Story 16. I hope Roman led. <laughs> So, Sri Radharaman Ghos Bhagavat Bhusan. Sri Radharaman Ghos. We should try more and more in life. <laughs> Sri Radharaman Ghosa was the son of Sri Krishna Govinda Ghosa, a resident of Dhaka, East Bengal which became Bangladesh now. After graduation, he became the manager of the estate of Marsh 
Maharishi Dendra Nath later was appointed private secretary of Maharaj Virachandra Adur, the rule of Maharaj Virachandra Badura was a great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Radharaman was a man of strong character. The Maharaj often went to his house and passed most of his time in the company of the Vaishnavas. One day, he was sitting in a room on the first floor of his house and was busy talking with the Vaishnavas about things celestial. Outside in the veranda were spread out a number of things of which the most valuable was a beautiful shawl. On a tree in front of the veranda sat a monkey. He jumped into the veranda and ran away with a shawl. Radharaman and the other employees of the Raj tried to rescue the shawl from the monkey, but their shouts and threats were of no avail. They started throwing bread and fruits, etc., towards him. But the monkey did not even look at them. Notwithstanding his greediness and natural liking for fruits, it seemed that for the moment he was interested only in tearing the shawl into pieces. The noise created by the episode drew the attention of the Maharaj. He came out into the veranda and began to look at the monkey sitting at the top of the tree and tearing the shawl with his teeth, absolutely unaffected by the allurement of so many tempting things to eat. <coughs> the Maharaj kept on looking at the monkey. Radha Raman goes and the attendants so that he was in a thoughtful mood and tears were trickling down his eyes. Obviously, the Maharaj was not weeping for the shawl, but no one had the courage to ask him what had actually transpired within him. The attitude of the Maharaj particularly aroused the curiosity of Radha Raman. He began to look for an opportunity to ask him about it. In the evening, he went into his room when he was sitting alone. Him supplicatingly, supplicatingly. Your Highness, we are all very much ashamed that on account of our inadvertence, you had to suffer the loss of the precious shawl this morning. But we were surprised that you did not say anything to us. On the contrary, we noticed that the scene of the monkey tearing the shawl aroused some noble sentiment in your heart of which the signs were visible on your face. I pray that you kindly divulge to me the secret of it all. The Maharaj laughed and said, Brother Roman, it was not a monkey that tore my shawl. It was a saint who came in the form of a monkey 
and went away after teaching me a valuable lesson. The lesson was that I should learn to be humble if I want to gain anything from my visit to Vrindavan. I should not come here as a Maharaj with my retinue and all the luxurious things I possess. I should come as an ordinary devotee who owns nothing and wants nothing except what is necessary to sustain life and is helpful in bhajan. My heart was filled with gratitude towards the monkey for the lesson he gave me by tearing my shawl and a few drops of tears that fell from my eyes were only an outward expression of what I felt in my heart. Henceforth, I shall leave behind the mirage in me whenever I come to Vrindavan. One small thing I like to say just came in my mind that as you know, in Vrindavan, all the monkeys always steal the glasses. They like to steal the glasses. <laughs> so one time, someone asked to Keshav Baba, while Keshav Baba was here during class in the evening, for some period of time before, Baba, please tell us why the monkey always steal the glasses. Like, what is there that they like to steal them and chew them? And then he said, because for, for those who did not develop yet a spiritual Um, you have to remove this vision, what you have, this materialistic vision, and you should see with, a, with other eyes. It means like, we take off your glasses, you see less with the material vision, because you should develop more your spiritual vision in Vrindavan. So that's why actually Keshav Bhava used to wear always glasses, but and during Parikram here in the temple, but never they uh, attack to him. So that some devotee was asking, how is that they never attack to you, but they always like to <laughs> steal the <laughs> glasses of other devotees. <laughs> of course, he has already a certain vision. So, yeah, just came in my mind in connection with this. <clears throat> this touched the heart of Radharaman. <clears throat> A new realization came to him. His pride was subdued and his prejudice against the humble Vaishnavas was gone. He looked like one dazed and disillusioned. The Maharaj, who had sensed his pride and prejudice long before, now found a suitable opportunity to strike at their, at their root. He said, Radharaman, it is difficult to be a true Vaishnava. The essence of Vaishnavism is humility. Mahaprabhu himself was an incarnation of humility. He came to show that the mercy of the Lord flows freely towards the humble and lowly. Like rainwater that always seeks the lower level. <coughs> the people who sit on the mountain, on the mountain top of pride, remain untouched by the stream of mercy. I am a Maharaj. There is no end to my pride. I wonder if the Lord will ever show mercy on a self conceited person like me. As the Maharaj said this, tears streamed out of his eyes. Several times before, people had argued with Radharaman Ghos to convince him that heavenly quality and no one
quality. They were not able to convince him. But the living example of humility he saw in the Maharaj had a powerful impact upon him. He had an intuitive perception of the inner state of equilibrium, self-surrender and self-effacement necessary for receiving divine grace, which the quality of humility had brought about in the Maharaj. He was convinced that humility was <laughs> heavenly and the religion of Sri Chaitanya, which attached the greatest importance to humility <laughs> and which could convert the power conscious and self-conceited people like the Maharaj and the criminals like Jagai and Madai into saints was the highest religion. He decided to become a Vaishnava of the Chaitanya Sampradaya and follow the path of devotion prescribed by Sri Chaitanya. Radharaman Ghos was not now the Radharaman who was proud of his character and considered humility as an infirmity and the Vaishnavas who cultivated humility as inferior sort of persons. He was now himself a humble and devout Vaishnava, earnestly aspiring for the darshan of the Lord. If purity of heart is the condition for the darshan of the Lord, as the scriptures say, he now deserved to have his darshan. For pride and prejudice, the only two black spots in his heart were now removed. The Lord did bless him with his darshan in a manner which was both mysterious and unprecedented. He now used to pass most of his time in meditation in the forests of Braj. One day, as he was wandering in a forest, he saw a Vaishnava saint sitting under a Tamil tree, facing its trunk and reading aloud Srimad Bhagavatam. He was the Vakta, the person who spoke, and Sri Krishna, whose presence he imagined in the tree, was the only Shrota, or person, who listened. Tears of love were constantly flowing from his eyes. Thus, he read out Bhagavatam to Sri Krishna every day. Radharaman sat behind the saint and listened to the path of Bhagavatam. When the path was over, he quietly came away and the saint did not know about his presence, anything about his presence. The next day, he again went to the same place at the same time and sat behind the saint, listening to his path. This continued for a number of days. One day, the saint noticed him. He asked him reverentially to sit by his side and listen to path every day until it was completed. He also told him how he would be the second listener of the path the first being Sri Krishna. Radharaman not only implicitly believed what he said, he was elated with the thought that he would listen to the path in close proximity with Sri Krishna. On the last day of the path, a miracle happened. The trunk of the Tamil tree burst. The hollow 
thus created in the trunk, was a glow with a blue radiance. In the midst of the radiance appeared Sri Krishna, standing cross-legged with the flute held in his two hands near the mouth, and the peacock feather swaying on his crown, and looking tenderly at the two devotees with a smile that was bewitching. Radharaman had this had the darshan of Sri Krishna, but the very next moment he fell senseless on the ground. When he came to his senses, he saw that he was lying with his head on the lap of the saint. He got up and prostrated himself at his feet. The saint tenderly passed his hand over his head and said, Radharaman, you have been blessed with the darshan of my Radharaman. It is now my injunction that you read out Bhagavatam to Sri Krishna every day. Krishna will be pleased to shower his blessings upon you ever and ever more. From that day, Radharaman began to read Bhagavatam to Sri Krishna every day, either at home or outside under some tree. The saint had told him that in order to read Bhagavatam to Sri Krishna, it was not necessary to invoke him, for he loved to hear Bhagavatam so much that he himself came running to the place where Bhagavatam was read, like a cow that ran after its calf and sat in the heart of the reader and the listeners, like a prisoner. So he read Srimad Bhagavatam with a confidence that Sri Krishna was his lone listener. He not only read out the slokas, he explained them as well. His explanations were always Goranga oriented. They were so masterly and attractive that other people also began to attend his path. He became famous as an exponent of Srimad Bhagavatam and the pandits conferred upon him the title Bhagavatam Bhusana. It was due to the effort of Radharaman Ghosh and the financial aid of Maharaj Virachandra Manikya that the Barampura edition of Srimad Bhagavatam with four commentaries and their translation edited Sri Ram Narayan Vidyaratna and many other scriptures were published. Sri Radharamana Ghosaki <laughs> so we do have here with us another embodiment of, hum of humility, which is Jayananda Maharaj. So please, can you can you share something about the importance of humility in our? Vaishnav tradition and everyday practice. No, I don't have any humility. <coughs> or maybe Radha Charam. Radha Radha. I will speak only because Jananda asked me to speak. <laughs> um, the qualities of Vaishnava is natural, coming from the heart, because this is qualities of soul, it's spiritual qualities. It's not like trained in particular way. I remember once uh, Shonarenga Samaraj taught about humility. He told then tree have not, 
inherent fruits, it's, it's growing very straight. But then same tree getting fruits, all branches going down. Mm. And um but sometimes I see how his nature coming we return from parikrama and he was um, taking rest uh, in front of giridari gaudimato on the grass and first his reaction when he saw us was so friendly so open but then he stopped himself and started behaving as a guru <laughs> because he, how to say, he have deal with us according our uh, capacity, what we can understand. But I saw sometimes his natural desire, natural behavior came, not official, not to show. Rather, sorry. <laughs> also, because we, we know many sadhana. Wow. Yeah. Seems like uh, when we enter spiritual life to be humble it's something like fantastic <laughs> it's too good uh, Daddy, Daddy, then I mean, we meet rather rather are there? Fine. You, you can listen. Can repeat. No problem. Just one sentence before uh, we lost. Could you read, uh, could you say one sentence before? Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, at first, when we when we are how to say accepted into spiritual path, <clears throat> spiritual life, then many things, uh, many beautiful characteristics of devotees seem like uh, very far, high, sometimes even strange, how it's possible. <laughs> but then, uh, we meet, we slowly meet devotees. And my God, I see you here, beautiful souls. And to me, uh, <laughs> the more, the more sadhus I met, I, I, I felt, no, it's not strange. It's not far. It's natural. This other thing is unnatural. So for me, for us, this is how I feel when I'm blessed that um, we are all souls. First, we are humble. This is not second. <laughs> it's not like what we learn. <laughs> but what we used to, how to say, used to just live in this way live in humble way, Radha, Guru, devotees, holy name, give us experience from time to time to, to, to behave and feel humbly. And uh, yeah, it's very nice feeling. 
mm, being pure pure from uh, uh, pure pro from pretending pure from fault finding pure from complaining being happy humble means happy humble means embracing humble means welcoming mm. serving loving being friend it's natural <laughs> it's natural <laughs> yeah also for me humility means seeing things as they are seeing me seeing radha mohan mm. as my beloved and uh, radha mohan loves so many people <laughs> all souls so they are all my beloved yeah it's a world of amazing loving opportunity no fear just love rad So, uh, humbleness is a symptom of real Vaishnava. So, we could see our Guru Dev never criticize other people. And, uh, and this Maharaj was tears coming out. <laughs> So, my experience with Sadhu, like, like Bhakti Pramoda Puri Maharaj. One day, I'm fortunate to enter his room. And then, uh, he was, I don't speak Bengali, but uh, he's like uh, my grandfather. Like, uh, he's like uh, my head, like, uh, kind of like this. Take care of something like that. And then, in, on his behalf, as a puja day, he was describing his Guru Dev's glory. At that time, I don't, I don't understand any, a, a few Bengali. But uh, this, his humbleness come in, enter in my heart. And uh, naturally, tears is coming out. I completely shocked. Just seeing the Vaishnava and tears is coming out. And then I understood, oh, he is really Paramahansa. Because his vibration touching in my heart. He's externally great guru, but in, internally so humble. At that time, I felt. Also, one day, Gora Govinda Swami Maharaj went to Mayapur and came back from, I think, GBC meeting. At that time, he has very much hard time. Many, we don't know exactly, but many GBC member and criticize him and uh, make some rule on heavy him, heavy rule on him. At that time, he was talking about, uh, but he did not explain any criticism. 
any, any complain. And we could see his humbleness. We shocked. How Vaishna behave like this? Because so many criticism there, so many heavy things upon him, but he's completely tolerating and amazing his quality. Externally, he was very, his class very boldly, very strong like Sinhaguru, but uh, <coughs> dealing with devotee is so humble. If I go in front of him, I feel, oh, I'm so much ego. I'm so puffed up because I could see his humbleness reflect my heart. Mm. And that is a kind of experience. And uh, if we go in front of Vaishnava, we could feel his humbleness. Like Brindaba also, if, if we come Brindaba, we could see our, our dirty thing sometime in our heart. So once also Naren Maharaj also experienced our heart. We are sitting, not alone, we are sitting a few devotees, maybe 20 devotees, and he starts singing one bhajan. And uh, his humbleness penetrated my heart. And uh, that mood, again, tears coming out. I cannot tolerate, you know, I cannot uh, stop tear. Many, many minutes, just tears coming out. Then at that time, I understood, oh, Narayan Maharaj was so great. And uh, I've seen Narayan Maharaj's case. I've seen when he was no disciple, maybe 87. At that time, we are so, one. I'm wondering how he behaves so humbly, how he does not have disciple. We, I'm really wondering. Because his behavior, his, his dealing with God brothers is, or Vaishnavas, is very amazing. And Gurudev also. Gurudev is always glorified as a devotee. This is sometimes, uh, upset. Because we are position of, you know, disciple, we are, you know, we are position of nobody. But the Guru Devs treat me, treat each devotee, you know, and sitting higher position and glorifying and to eat fast. This is humility. And uh, some want to argue Guru Dev. Sometimes criticize Guru Dev. At that time, I've seen he did not argue any argument. He accepted, yes, true, yes, true. But actually, you are not seeing my reality. I'm more bad person, which you thinking, you know, I'm more bad quality. Like, you know, he's saying, oh my God, oh, this is Vaishnava behavior, which I don't have it. So just seeing Vajnava, the humility, we can experience some kind of prema. Because Anandas Baba said, humility and prema is nearly equal. He also mentioned Mahaprabhu teaches humility. Mahaprabhu also completely is humble. And any Real follower of Mahaprabhu is very humble. That's my, my observance. Rade, rade. Anyone likes to share? Uh, Jenan, the, it reminds me one result my life. Um, it uh, it's happened in 2001 in Moscow. Uh, one acharya came, Shilbaktivala uh, Bhattirti Gosai Maharaj. And I 
uh, it was a big hall rented for his lectures. In front of hall, I distributed books, Shunrenga Samaraj books. And he came to me because it was on the way to the hall. And he, I was in Vaishnava dress, and he asked me, who am I? Who is my guru? Like this, what's my name? And I was so much impressed by his <coughs> eyes. I, because I know he's Acharya, but in his eyes, I don't see any proudness. He, he was so simple, like a child. <laughs> it was my impression, close, when he came close and I spoke with him. Very, very simple person. And also about what I understood about uh, humbleness, it's natural behavior uh, coming from the soul. Um, and also, it also, it's acceptance of own nature means also material nature. For example, uh, Arjuna is fighting in uh, Kurukshetra. Is his humbleness? He's just following his nature. Krishna told him, "You must fight, you be because you're a warrior. It's your nature. If you will try to act against your nature, what will be?" To so, behave humble uh, in humble way. It's difficult in souls trying to be someone else <laughs> than trying to behave. In, uh, it's when soul thinking, oh, if I will behave like this, my I will be more greater in the eyes of ours. <laughs> when soul trying to be someone, not natural behavior. This is. Not humbleness. Humbleness is very natural. Radhe. So we'll continue to read the next story of Sri Jagadish Das Babaji. There is a Not very far from the famous Madhav Mohan's temple in Vrindavan is Kaliadaha, the part of river Yamuna where Krishna once danced over the head of the multi-headed cobra called Kaliya. On the bank of the river is a beautiful spot surrounded by trees. <coughs> Imagine that in the midst of the trees in front of an old cottage he seated an old Mahatma. Though old, he is tall and well built. The luster of his snake body seems to penetrate and dispel the growing darkness of sunset. The slow movement of his lips and the Tulasi rosary in his hand indicate that he is engaged in bhajan, in japa. But his phrase, neck, fixed gaze, and the glowing smile on his face indicate that he is completely lost in the enjoyment of a scene of transcendental beauty. By his side is sitting a very handsome young boy wearing only a loincloth of jute. He is also engaged in japa. He looks at the face of Baba and then in the direction in which his gaze is fixed. But not being able to see anything in that direction, he keeps on looking at Baba's face with curiosity. Baba suddenly exclaims, See, Gopal, see! Krishna Balaram returning from the forest and the cows trailing behind. 
Oh, how beautiful they look. I do not see anything, Baba, replies Gopal with tears in his eyes. You will see. I have said you will see, says Baba, affectionately giving a mild slap. The old Babaji is the Siddha Jagadish Das Babaji of Kalidyaha, and the young boy is Dhirendranath Chakravarti, the son of Sri Bupendra Nath Chakravarti, a landlord of Bengal. The boy later became known as Siddha Sri Goranga Das Babaji of Raman Reti, Vrindavan. But he was called Gopal by Jagadish Das Baba out of affection. Jagadish Das Babaji came of a respectable Brahmin family of Vardhanaman in Bengal. He was a very successful doctor. He used to practice in Kalana. At the age of 50, he took initiation from Siddha Sri Bhagavan Das Babaji of Kalana. Soon after, he renounced the world and came to Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, he lived for some time in the old temple of Madan Mohan, but later shifted to a small cottage in Kalidyaha. Baba's life was simple and austere. He lived on Madhukari and did not take salt. Bhagavan Das Baba ordinarily advised his disciples to do only Harinam Japa, but he considered Jagadis Das to be above the ordinary in devotion. Therefore, he initiated him in Raganug Bhajan. Practicing bhajan according to the Raganug mode of bhakti, he used to be mostly absorbed in deep meditation. Sometimes he would be so absorbed that he would be unaware even of the food kept before him by his disciple for eating, and it would remain untouched until he regained outer consciousness. Sometimes people would come to see him, perform dandavat, and sit down before him, but he would not know about their arrival until the absorption was over and someone told him about it. <laughs> he would then feel very uncomfortable and think that he had committed an aparada offense against the visitors. To guard himself against the aparada thereafter, when he sat outside his cottage, he put Shalagram Shila in front of him so that the dandavat made by the visitors might be to Shalagram, not to him. <laughs> Whenever Jagadish Das Baba had any difficulty in Lila Smaran, he sought the favor of the Vaishnavas or the Raja, the holy dust of Vrindavan. One day, when he had no revelation of Lila, he went as usual to Sringarvat for Madhukari in the evening. Ramananda Goswami, who was at that time the Adhikari, the presiding authority of Sringarvat, said, Baba, what is the matter? Why do I not see the usual exaltation and brightness on your face today? Baba replied, What shall I say? My stars are dual today. I stand in need of your benediction. Goswamiji understood 
what he meant. He advised him to roll in the Raja, the dust of Vrindavan. He began to roll on the ground in the courtyard of Sringarvat. As he was doing so, he began to feel that the floodgate of the current of Krishna Lila, which had been closed against him, had to reopen it. Jagadis Das Baba used to swim freely like a fish in the ocean of Krishna Lila. The changing scenario of the Lila brought about corresponding changes in his emotions. His emotions were so strong that they visibly affected the body and brought about corresponding changes in its color. When for any reason the flow of Lila stopped, he felt strangled and tossed in pain like a fish out of water. The pain would be so severe that he would e even think of committing suicide. Once in this state, he said to Gopal, Gopal, would you do one thing? Surely, Baba, let me know what I have to do. I will stand on the edge of the wall. You push me into it, of the well, sorry. I will stand on the edge of the well. You push me into it. For the first time in his life, Guranga Das was compelled to disobey Baba. Not only that, he started keeping strict watch over him so that he might not commit suicide. Until Baba's original state was restored, he always kept close to him. As ordained by Jagadish Das Babaji, Guranga Das lived in Govardhan, where he practiced Raganuga Bhajan. But very often, he came to Vrindavan to look after Jagadish Das Baba. Once, while he was sleeping on the ground near Jagadish Baba's bed, Jagadish Baba affectionately planted his foot on his chest. Since then, the Divine Lila of Radha Krishna began to unfold itself to him. Once Guranga Dasji went to Radha Kund. There he was invited by a sadhu, whom he had not known before, to stay with him in Radha Kund for some time. He accepted the invitation, but he had stayed with him only for one night when he discovered that the sadhu belonged to a pseudo-religious sect in which woman and wine were necessary parts of sadhana. The next morning he left his company, but he found that this heart was empty. The subtle effect of the company of the unholy man had blocked his vision and he was not able to see Krishna Lila. He felt choked like a fish who suddenly finds that the water of the pond in which he lived has dried up. Immediately he started for the Parikram of Giriraj. It was the month of June when the sun is hottest. He was walking the whole day in the scorching heat of the sun and praying to Giriraj. In the evening, he felt tired and lay down for rest of Kund, but he fell asleep. It was dangerous to sleep on the step because if he turned sides in sleep, he would fall into the Kunda pond. When he woke up, he found that someone had lifted him bodily 
and laid him at a safer place. He looked all around to see who that person could be. But to his surprise, it found that no one was anywhere near the place. The next day, he went to Jagadish Das Baba in Vrindavan. No sooner had he laid himself prostrate before his feet, then he shouted, Like a fool, you sleep wherever you like. You do not know where to sleep and where not to sleep. Gurangadas understood that it was Baba who had lifted him from the step of Uddhavkund. This brought him the realization that Gurudev followed the disciple like a shadow wherever he went and protected him. Brothers in his eyes. Gurangadas then told Baba about the loss of vision he had suffered on account of his meeting with the sadhu in Radhakun <laughs> and prayed for his blessings. Baba blessed him and his vision was restored. Jagadis Das Baba was always very cautious lest he might commit an offense against someone. Saints like him often avoid visitors on account of their absorption in bhajan. But Baba was always careful not to disappoint anyone who came to him. If anyone advised him to the contrary, he said, My name is Jagadish Das, which means the servant of Jagadish, the Lord. I regard everyone who comes to me as Jagadish himself, who has come in his form. I feel that it is my duty to serve him. Mahaprabhu sends a man to me so that I may answer his questions, remove his doubts, and give him necessary advice regarding bhajan. If I do not serve him in this manner, Baba did not arrange katha or path at his place so that people who came to him for advice at that time might not have to return disappointed. He was available to visitors for conversation at all times except when he was lost in Lila Smarana. In the midst of conversation he would sometime himself ask a question and answer it. And then he would ask others to express their opinion because he did, did not like to oppose them if they expressed their views first. And their views happened to be different from his. After the conversation, when people wanted to leave, he would anxiously look at their faces to see whether they were going back happy and satisfied or not. It's humility, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Once Baba's brother came from Bengal, Baba treated him affectionately and inquired about his welfare. When he said that his wife was dead, Baba said, God's grace, he has made you free. <clears throat> you can now come to Vrindavan and do bhajan. <laughs> After the brother had gone, he began to think, my brother did not look happy when he was leaving. Yeah. It's lower. It's lower. It's lower. Yeah. My brother did not look happy 
when he was leaving. Possibly he was displeased with me because instead of expressing sympathy with him in his bereavement, I had said that God had done him a favor. If Baba had known where he was staying, the brother, where the brother was staying, he would have gone there to apologize to him. That he would return to Vardaman in a day or two. So he went to the station every day for two or three days with the expectation that he might meet him there and apologize. But he could, he could not meet him. He also did not know his Vardaman address. Therefore, he wrote a letter to a friend in Vardaman asking him to inquire from his brother and let him know whether he had forgiven him. The friend replied that his brother was at all displeased. He did not go to see him again because he did not want to disturb him in his bhajan. Since then, once a devotee named Sinu Babu offered him 40 rupees so that he might celebrate the disappearance day of his guru decently. Forty rupees. <laughs> <laughs> that the time. <laughs> the sure, but amazing. At least and now, he could not turn down the offer made in the name of the guru, market, and purchased molasses worth twenty rupees for preparing malpua. Malpua is a sweet puri. For anyone who doesn't know. It's a puri, but sweet, kind of. <laughs> After keeping the molasses in his cottage, he went to a nearby well for washing his feet, but forgot to close the door of the cottage. On returning, he found that a number of monkeys had entered the cottage and were freely feasting on the molasses. Baba laughed to his heart's content to see the monkeys feasting. <laughs> there was no question of his driving them away, for they were the monkeys of Vrindavan, <laughs> and they had kindly invited themselves to the function in connection with the celebration of the disappearance day of his guru. When the feast was over and the monkeys were leaving, he respectfully bowed down to them. <laughs> In the evening, we're using hotspot, Gurudev. So, hotspot is like off of the phone, and then the phone. Sorry. <laughs> In the evening, when Sinu Babu came and inquired about the celebration, who made the donation, he said the celebration was very successful. A large number of monkeys, Vaishnavas, <laughs> fishes. Only 20 rupees. <laughs> Here are the remaining 20 rupees, which I thankfully return. 
Regarding Prashad, you may go inside a cottage. Probably you will find some particles of it <laughs> scattered on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Jagadish ba Das Babaji but once a desire arose in his mind these two of Raj, Raj Rishi and Badura. Many Babu began to raise contributions. Greatly, the rich people began to contribute. A widow of the Babu's family contributed. The Raja of Heta of twenty five thousand Raj Banagid responsibility were consultation with Jagadish Das Baba. Matsuma found that the lake had taken the place in his mind. This made him so angry with himself and hid himself in some forest. People went out in search, but it could not be found. Suddenly, one day he came back. Kamini Babu So I insist that no one a mention of it so long I am a Jagadish Bhambal. Mahaprabhu has said in the famous shloka that one should be humble like a and Someone asking out of the prema in order to achieve prem to mold himself into the frame of the loka. More he molds himself into it, the nearer he will be to prema. And when he has completely molded himself, he would he also say mind is from Sit 
the saints can leave their body at will. Jagadish, thus Baba became a hundred years old, he desired to leave his body. At that time, Goranga Das Babaji was living with him. On account of his affection for Goranga Das, it was not possible for Baba to leave the body in his presence. <coughs> Therefore, he asked him to go and live in Barshana and serve the Banukar Sarovar, a large pond lake by sweeping and cleaning its surroundings every day. When he was about to leave, he said to him, When he was about to leave, he said to him, Remember three things. Never ask anyone for any favor. Never disclose the secret of your heart to anyone. Never attend a feast. Brangas began to live in Marshana and render regular service to Bhanukar Kunda. After some days, Jagadish Asma appeared before him in a He saw him as a man from him. But as he moved him, he asked him not to do so by waving his hand and disappeared. <laughs> Goranga Dasji understood that Baba had left the body. Struck with grief, he immediately started for Vrindavan. On the way, he learned that Baba had actually left the body. On the sixth day of the second half of the Mount Asada, Jai Shri Jagadish Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai I think this this Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj Sorry? Uh, maybe <coughs> this this Kapoji mentioned Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj Yeah, maybe he also comes after Yeah, because Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj is his uh, Guru, Guru Dev Yeah, 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 okay yeah. After Bhakti Danta. Yeah, after right. So therefore he wants to, you know, write in 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 detail in this story. That's I feel. Mm. 